So George went back to, the, to Belfast, where he met with a group of young men, and then he returned again at the, later in 1914, and this group of young men then went and met in Monaghan, and they formed themselves into a little group, and they called themselves the Elim Evangelistic Band. There were 20 of them by 1920. They were all on faith lines, and God blessed them in a most remarkable way. Just imagine starting a group that would become a religious denomination in 1915, when the First World War had just broken out, money was very tight. The sheer audacity of their faith that they went into towns and opened up. Remember that they were starting a Pentecostal group and there was a great deal of opposition from all the major churches, from the denominations, from all the major leaders were speaking out against them. God honored the faith of these men, young men that they were. Some of them were 17, 18 years of age when they started. Many of them were only just about 20, taking charge of churches that ran to hundreds of people and believing that God would honor their preaching. Not only that, that they would be able to keep the people that God had given them through George Jeffrey's ministry, but also they themselves saw converts as a result of their own ministry. Well, Birmingham, Birmingham really is, is, is one of the keys. It, it was the place that they never went to. You see, you have Elim and you have Assemblies of God, but what they do, and have done over the years, when one has got a major work in a town, we don't go into the town where they are. We, we don't tread on each other's territory, if you like, because we don't, if they're doing a good job there, and that, that was been a general policy. So that Elim kept out of Birmingham. You know, George Jeffrey was having great success in London and different parts, and the Assemblies of God had strongholds in other areas. And, uh, and so Elim kept out of Birmingham. Because Birmingham is where the Assemblies of God started. It was launched in Aston in Birmingham, although they were never very strong in Birmingham. So an opportunity came for George Jeffreys to go to Birmingham. And they, they purchased a building actually in Smethwick with an idea of opening up in Birmingham. But then the opportunity came to hire off, to have some meetings in a church that was going to close in Steelhouse Lane, which was a big congregational church. But they started with only a handful of people. He was hardly, George was hardly known. But within a very short time, people were healed and people came. Now, people also came, of course, from, the, from other parts of the Midlands where where uh, Edward Jeffreys had been holding meetings, and they, some people thought it was the same Jeffreys. You get a lot of confusion there. So, so, so that did give him an extra little following. But nevertheless, before very long, th there were crowds filling this place, and we've got pictures of them queuing up outside. So they said, look, we, we must do something. You know, we can't cope with these crowds. So they said, we better move into the town hall which was available on some nights. So they hired the town hall, which seated about two and a half thousand. And um, nice and central. But they filled that. So they said, well, we better look around for another place. So the only larger place that was available was the skating rink at Walford Road in Spark Brook, off by the, you know, one of the main roads, main Warwick Road. Now this seated 8,000 and they advertised it and said you'll be sure of a seat, you know, this is the largest skating rink in Europe. And so many people turned up that they filled the place. And we've got photographs of that. So, well, what do we do now? Well, the only other place was the old Bingley Hall, which was, had been used as a sort of you know, like the type of ideal homes exhibition type of thing, a huge place, like a, like a great big series of barns. So George Jeffries went there, and they filled it, and he was there for several weeks, and he baptised over a thousand people by total immersion.
in the Bingley Hall, and they recorded something around 10,000 recorded converts in the Bingley Hall. And time and time again, that's just what happened. Someone would come in who was very sick, they would be prayed for, and God would miraculously heal them. Those who were deaf would hear, the blind would see, the lame would walk. Some of the miracles were absolutely unbelievable. With the fire of God and the truth in hand. Many, many young people were converted. You can imagine George Jeffries going into a town like Halifax, for example, and going there, and these mill girls telling each other, you want to come and see what's happening here. Miracles are taking place before our very eyes. We're seeing for ourselves how the people who have been deaf and dumb are speaking. People who've been lame. A man who is prayed for, who's lame, suddenly leaps into the air with a shout and runs around the hall shouting, I'm healed, I'm healed. Or a man who's got a great big hump on his back, hands are laid on him and the hump just disappears. And the man who is living in the town of Swansea goes along to the local newspaper office who know him very well and tells them what's happened and they testify to the fact that they've observed the difference in this man. And the man later on becomes a minister in the Church of the Nazarene, and a very respected one of that. God moved in miraculous ways in those days, and God is still the same. These young men, themselves converts of George Jeffries, themselves saw others converted through their ministry so that they fed on to the next generation. It's an exciting story, and we say, Lord, what you did then, you can do again. God's not changed. Our times have changed, but God is the same. And the God who blessed these young men and young women who started way back in 1915 and through 1925 and through the 30s, God is the same. For our generation, God raised up a generation of young people to see God moving again. God buries his workmen but he carries on with his work.